So I think I might want to jump into a topic that's been talked about long and 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 uh, but not very deep. And we, you know, we're all trained, you know, to look for something called ESO fixation disparity. You know, we've been told and we've been trained that you know myopes with ESO fixation disparity are often going to progress more rapidly, and I would love to understand the difference between an e ESO fixation disparity and esophoria or esotropia or convergence insufficiency. Um, and if you could maybe try to identify the difference between those things and, and also how would you even go about testing for a fixation disparity? Okay, so I think fixation disparity is one of those things that, you know, my thought about it was always I hope there weren't too many too many questions on a on a test that I would be taking in school about fixation disparity because I never felt like I understood it as well as I did other things. But generally, uh, fixation disparity is really a way of looking at kind of the posture of the visual system when you're looking at it from a binocular point of view. And so when you're doing that, you're not dissociating the person, you're not doing anything to, um, to have them look with one eye at a time. You're trying to find really a basis for it. Uh, and some people feel it's a more realistic view of binocular vision. Now, interestingly, in the US and in Europe, we look at fixation disparity a little bit differently. In the US, the um, way we look at it tends to be a little bit more looking at the motor aspects of binocularity. And in Europe, they tend to do it on more of a sensory basis. They do some testing there that we don't really do here. Um, but all that aside, if you're looking at someone and you're doing, for example, a cover test, if you see an esophoria or an exophoria, not even strabismus, um, you're looking at something that happens when you cover one eye at a time. And so it's, a, it's different than a fixation disparity, but it's also an indication of how someone may be uh, posturing their eyes or what happens when uh, their system is pushed to, a lim to the limit. So they may not be uncomfortable necessarily, but it may say, well, what happens toward the end of the day? Do they have the, the stamina and the stability in order to maintain good binocularity without paying a price for that? And I think myopia is a price that we pay for that. Um, and so I think the key really is uh, if you do see someone who, who maybe is ortho on a cover test, because I don't think we can see that kind of movement until it's maybe three or four prism diopters, maybe even five or six, uh, might they have a fixation disparity? And I have to be honest, I don't always test for that uh, because I also look at their fusional reserves and other things that should tell me whether they have enough, again, stamina and stability. But I do think if they have some um, complaints or you do see them, progressing in myopia, that would be another test that you could do. And there are what they call fixation disparity cards, most, and there are distance charts that have them on as well. Some of the computerized charts have them now. And usually you wear some type of lenses, either polarized or maybe red and blue, so that one eye has one view and the other eye has another view. And then you're looking how, when they're looking with both eyes together, how the eyes are posturing together. And you can use small amounts of prism to line things up better for them if they don't line up well by themselves. Uh, and there are some people who with very, very small one or two prism diopters, sometimes even a half, really does make a big difference to them comfort wise. That's one. And the question is, if you do that, will that be one of the tools that might slow down uh, myopic progression? Um, and I haven't seen any statistics on that. But again, uh, we don't always know who's going to respond to the treatment in a certain way. You know, I, I think that anything we have, even when we say it works well, it may work for 80 percent. But what if that patient's in the 20 percent? And we don't know that. So I think that, that where we are left is, first, when we're seeing any patient, are we doing at least some basic tests of binocularity in a way that we can at least know their status even before they become myopic? 
you know, maybe it's even a young child who isn't myopic yet. You know, do we have some baseline to follow and watch or something that might be a flag that maybe they will end up there? Um, because in young children, the print is large and they're not maybe reading as long as, and as intensively, although uh, we'll see what happens after COVID and everybody's on screens for a long time. Um, there have been a number of articles saying that it's likely we'll see more myopia. Um, my I've asked a lot of my colleagues and no one says they've seen an actual trend, but uh, in both op optometric uh, journals and in ophthalmological literature, there have been articles saying that it's likely that that's what we may see. Um, but I don't think anyone knows for sure because, uh, you know, there's so many different factors. But um, I do think that if everyone, uh, every doctor who examines a patient starts with a baseline, some basic tests of binocularity, uh, it can be stereo and maybe I'd like to see virgences because I like to see a, a break and a recovery and just see uh, how that looks. And, um, and then doing a cover test, doing a near point of convergence, those things don't take very long and they give you a lot of information. Um, and so when you have that, even if the person is not having any issues and you don't have any major concerns, it's something that you can look at when they come back again and see if there's any kind of a trend, if things are getting a little better, a little worse. Maybe one day you examine them in the morning and another day at the end of a long day of school and you might see some differences. So if we all did that as a baseline, then I think we could jump in early. And, and really, it's not just about controlling myopia, it's preventing it as much as we can. <clears throat>